I um want to talk about because I unleashed a big cat in um my last video when I was talking about the very vulnerable parts of me. And so when I was talking to God this morning, all he kept bringing me was this video to do, this video to do. And um, I'm now in a place in a space where I can actually talk about this and, um, you know, just talk about it in hopes that it will help somebody else. Because um, this is me raw and uncut. This is what I went through. This is who I am. And I am going to talk about my molestation um, story here. Because I was molested at a very young age, although I'm not going to go into total detail of what he did to me while he was molesting me or any of that kind of stuff. But I am going to, um, you know, talk about the insecurities that evolved around it, um, the signs that you can look for if this is maybe happening to somebody you know, um, and, you know, just kind of pay attention, okay? Or, God forbid, if anybody's going through this themselves right now, you know, I just, I God forbid it. But I know that it happens because it happened to me. So, um, I was molested by one of my mom's husbands. Um, and I was probably around, excuse me, I was probably around the ages of about, <gasps> excuse me, <laughs> I was um, around the ages of about, I want to say about four or five, maybe about like four to the age of like eight or something like that. Um, let's see, what, what grade are you in? in the third? No, it was probably, no, it was probably around four to seven, four to six or seven, something like that. I was really young. Um, and um, a lot of insecurities stemmed from this. So, um, this would happen late at night when my mom was asleep, my sister was sleeping in the bed right next to me when this was happening to me. And I remember thinking, um, when it first started happening, why, why is this happening to me? For, first of all, right away, I did not want my mother to know what was happening. I didn't even tell her what was happening until I got into an older age, until I was grown already. I didn't even tell my mom. And, um... I can't even remember if I actually told my mom. I think my sister is the one that spilled the beans because my sister knew about it, but I didn't tell my mom yet. Um, but anywho, it would happen late at night, during the middle of the night. Like I said, I'm not going to go into details of exactly what happened to me or what we were doing, you know, because, you know, I've since got over that. But um, he would come into my room late at night and do this to me. And I just remember thinking, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? I didn't know who to turn to. I couldn't tell my mom. My sister didn't know either. So I couldn't tell her at the time. I was so young. I didn't know why this was happening to me. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to feel. So um, a lot of times at school, and I know this is why I was shy a lot of times at school, I didn't say a lot of things. I didn't converse with a lot of people. I was very shy as a result of this. <laughs> Um, because this was happening to me, I didn't want, I was fearful of what people would think about me, what people thought about me, you know, it just, it put a lot of insecurity inside of me, um, because of what was happening to me. And for the simple fact is I was so young and I didn't know who to turn to. I didn't know how to tell my mother. I didn't know who, who, you know, I was keeping this all inside of me at a young age, all of this that was happening to me. And as a result, in, in, in my older ages, it resulted in a lot of anger. And I remember I was very jealous of my sister, my younger sister, because this, was, this wasn't this was happening to her. This didn't happen to her. She didn't go through anything like this um, that I know of in, in, her, in her life. So, um, and I noticed how she was just so popular. Everybody took to her. You know, she had lighter skin than I did. She had hazel eyes, unique um, brown hair. You know, I just... I was very jealous of her um, because she was she was everything I wasn't, you know, <laughs> in a nutshell. I was very shy. I had darker skin than she did. My eyes were brown. My hair was brown. My hair was black, or you know, my eyes were a blackish brownish color. My hair was black. Everybody was making in fun of me. I was being molested, you know, <laughs> so many different things. 
were going on in my life and 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 those weren't ha those these things weren't happening to her so i was very jealous i took out my anger on her a lot i was mean to my sister i made sure that everything went my way it, it didn't go her way you know <laughs> um down to the toys that we got I, I had to have the one i wanted um i would make up lies on her and say that she did things that she didn't do just to get her in trouble but i realized it was all a result of this happening of this happened to me um, and I, I know whenever I got older, I, um, I, I would always ask, like, if on, I would always say things like, if only my dad was there to protect me, you know, why did this happen? But it, I didn't speak out. It was my fault as well because I didn't speak out. I didn't tell anybody what was happening to me. Um, and so how could somebody help me? How could somebody save me? So this was my fault, you know. It wasn't my fault that this was happening to me, but it was my fault in the sense that I didn't tell anybody. But I was so young, I didn't even know how to tell anybody. <laughs> but I'm just letting you guys know that these insecurities can stem to, through you through relationships. And when, as well, and when I got into my first relationship at the age of 15, I lost my virginity at 15 years old, thinking that this was acceptable because of what happened to me when I was younger. I thought that this was what I needed, what, what, what I could give in a relationship, you know, what I could give. And when he, when I was getting pressured to have sex with him, I did it against my will. I did not want to, I was too young. I didn't want to have sex at that age. Um, and you know, I, I, and then I got pregnant and, and, you know, everything just went haywire at that point. But, um, the signs to look for in something that's happening to, if this is happening to somebody, if they are a very introverted, shy, angry child, something may be stemming from that, that you don't know. So it's always important. Like I tell my daughters all the time, even though they're only seven and eight years old, they're actually going to be eight and nine years old this month. Um, if there, if something, if something is going on at school, this can happen to them with people at school. This can happen to them with a family member, with a friend, somebody close to you. It is usually what this is, ha is how this happens to this, to somebody. Make sure you're asking them questions, you know, or make, sh and make sure you're telling them, you know, um, if somebody tell, if somebody touches you down there, let mommy know, okay? Don't hide it from me. Don't be afraid to tell me. You know, if, if somebody is messing with you down there or if somebody says something inappropriate to you, you make sure you let me know. You know, continue to talk to your kids. And not that my mom didn't talk to me, but she didn't know to talk to me because she didn't know that this was going on. You know, she she had never been through this before, so she didn't know. But I'm letting you know to talk to your daughters. Make sure that you are... You're, you're talking to them. You're letting them know that it's not right for somebody to be playing with them down there or for somebody to touch them or for them to touch somebody in an, in, 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 in an inappropriate way, you know. Make sure that you're talking to your daughters or your sons even, you know. I ask my sons, has anybody ever approached you inappropriately or touched you inappropriate? Because you need to know. Um, and you need to have these conversations often because you never know who it is that is doing this. This can happen, like I said, with anybody that's close to them, a teacher, a friend, a janitor, a, a uncle, an aunt. Like I said, this was my mom's husband that was doing this stuff inappropriately to me. Um, and so just make sure that you're talking to your daughters. If there's something funky going on, if there's something strange going on, if you notice they don't want to be home with a certain somebody alone, or if they're scared, if they have signs of fear, I remember I had a lot of fear in me. I was fearful to talk to people. I was fearful to open up to people. I was fearful to even say hello to people. If they have fear going on in them, those are signs that this could be happening to them. And I'm not saying that this is happening to them, but just make sure you're keeping an open gateway to them. Don't ever leave your children alone with somebody that you don't, you know, that you don't trust. Um, don't ever let the, the maintenance guy come in and when you have your children there alone or even the FedEx man I don't I don't trust anybody around my children like that I don't because you never know what kind of spirits people carry um and like I said it can even happen from the guy that's renovating your home or the maintenance guy or the FedEx guy or the mailman you never know um 
you know, I don't ever let my children ride their bikes without me there alone. I don't ever let them go outside unless I'm out there watching them. I don't ever let them play at the park unless I'm there watching them. I, like I said, they go to a public school, so I'm making sure that I'm that I'm um, asking them, um, you know, constantly, not all the time, of course, but, you know, very frequently, has anybody said anything to you appropriately or done anything to you? You know, we have those hard conversations between each other because I... I don't want them to go through what I went through. I don't. Um, so please, guys, if your children are showing signs of this, some chances are something's wrong. It may not be that they're being molested, but it may be that they're going through something that they just cannot tell you. So make sure that you're their friend as well as their parent when it comes to these things because it, it's so real, guys. It can happen. It happened to me. Um, it happened to me at a very young age. Like I said, I couldn't have been more than four. I'm thinking between the ages of four and seven that this happened to me. Four, six, four to six or seven, this happened to me. Um, and it happened to me all those years. It happened to me for years. Um, and I didn't, I didn't speak out. My mom had no clue. My sister had no clue that this was happening to me. It wasn't until I got older that this actually came out. <laughs> um, but... On a more serious note, if this has happened to you, if you've been molested or touched inappropriate or raped or any of that kind of stuff, it's going to take God to heal you from this. Not one person, not one thing, not one anything is going to take for you to heal. And with that being said, forgiveness is a big part of this. Unfortunately, when... When I decided I wanted to forgive the person that did this to me, they passed away. I didn't ever get a chance to forgive them face to face. So all of my forgiveness had to come through God. And God had to heal me from what happened to me because like I said, I was very shy and an angry person because of what happened to me. I resented a lot of what happened to me. Um, like I said, since my dad, my real dad wasn't there, I felt like when I got older that he wasn't there to protect me. But, I mean, everything happens for a reason. I don't know why, but I thank God for the grace to get me through what happened to me. <laughs> um, because God had to heal me, and then in him passing away, I wasn't able to face-to-face -to -face forgive him. So I had to, all my forgiveness had to come through the Lord. And it took a lot of healing for me to come through what I went through. And for me to even be sitting here on the internet, on YouTube, in front of everybody, in front of the whole world, telling you my story is taking me a lot. That took God to, to heal me from what happened to me. But I'm proudly here saying, standing here today, that I got through it. Christ has healed me. I've totally forgiven everybody that was involved in that. And I'm here to standing in front of you totally healed in Christ. I don't take any of that with any with my husband. My husband, of course, knows exactly what happened to me. I explained to him in full detail what happened to me. He knows what happened, how it happened, what he did to me, what I did to him. You know, my husband knows it all. But, um... It, I, I, at a time, I wouldn't have been able to openly say that to him because nobody else, none of the other relationships that I had ever been through before my husband knew what happened to me because I had not yet been healed from it. I had not yet expressed forgiveness in my heart to those people or to that person. I had not yet been completely brought and delivered through that. But now I've been delivered through it. I've been completely healed from it. Because I'm telling you, we'll take, you will take that baggage of, from what happened to you in your relationships. And you will begin to resent that person and withhold things from that person. Withhold your body, withhold yourself, withhold your feelings from that person um, in a way that stems from what happened to you when you were younger. And um, you will take certain fears with you. You will take certain anger with you. You will take certain regrets with you in your relationship. So... Your healing has to come from God in this. And there's no other way it's going to happen. It's got to come from God. Because to have gone through something like this, if you, if you know what I'm saying, it's very traumatic. It does things to you. It does things to your spirit. It does things to, your, to, to you that um, you can't get back unless you get healing through the Lord from it. 
So allow God to heal you. Allow God to deliver you. Submit yourself into prayer. Submit yourself unto God completely and he will get you through this. If you've been through this or God forbid if you're going through this now. Because this is a very serious thing. Um, it's something you can't take back but it's something that you can thank God for the grace to get through it. Um, if because you've if you've survived this long and you've gotten through it, you're you you're not through it anymore. You've been delivered from it. Now it's time for you to heal from it. Okay, it's not something that you can carry through you, through through you for the rest of with you for the rest of your life. You've got to be healed from it. Otherwise, you will be stinted in a lot of things that you could do, that you otherwise cannot do if you did not receive healing from Christ in this. I know I'm a witness of this. You have to be healed. We all have our stories that we've been through, whether if you've been hurt, molested, abused, whatever it might be, but it's only through Christ that you're going to be able to overcome. I hope that my story helped you guys. Um, like I said, this was a tough time for me, and I pray that if you have children, you open up these conversations and you examine them. Make sure that you're really paying attention to them and if anything has changed at all you make sure that you have these conversations with them okay um i love you guys i hope you guys have a wonderful day and please don't um count against me what happened to me <laughs> um and not going into full detail of what happened to me but i just feel like you guys know enough of what happens to children <laughs> that you know what happened to me it happened to me it did it happened to me at a very young age so I love you guys. Hope you guys have a good day. Bye.